Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Kamar. My guest tonight is Garang de Mabior Garang. Did I get it right? Mabior Garang de Mabior. <laughs> Mabior Garang de Mabior. Yes, sir. Sometimes uh, uh, the Sudanese names, you know, uh, they, they, they have a certain punch and, and they come with their uniqueness. That's what you bring to Africa. <laughs> the, few, the hate, the names and all those things. Mm. There are those who say the current predicament was inevitable because your leader, Dr. Yak Machar is a power-hungry man that according to Professor the Medicine Man among us, the Nuer, that mm -hmm. there was a prophecy mm -hmm. by a medicine man mm -hmm. among the Nuer community mm -hmm. that he would become head of state. Well... Uh, uh, are you also following the prophecy? Uh, no, I'm not following any prophecy. But um, it's a little bit amusing because uh, the, same, the same argument is used by those of uh, Salfakir where... They say that President Salfa should be the president for life because Dr. Dr. John pointed at him in Rumbek and said that he should be the leader. I mean, that's 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 a that's a very similar kind of uh, situation. When 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 you say that, it's like it's, it's as if uh, John Garang is Jesus and 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 Salfa Kir is Peter and and the, the the Pope of the new church. This is not the situation. But to answer your question. Um, I don't think it's illegal for a man to dream to want to, even yourself, for you to dream to be pr president of Uganda, for example. It's not a crime. I'm on having, having, um, having, <laughs> having ambitions to want to be president is not a crime. And there are processes, there are democratic processes that can be followed for one to do that. So is, is it illegal for one to have ambitions to want to be president? I don't, I don't think so. So I what, think, what I think it's, I think it's the, it's the democratic right of Dr. What, Riek what Machar find, to want to be president. What they find intriguing, or is the medicine man... Um, and there's the newer community who prophesied all this, and whether that is uh, has any clout in the opposition, SPLM opposition. Not at all, not at all. I mean, I'm not here following any prophet, but um, my interest, uh, our interests with Dr. Riek Machar coincide for the moment, so we are working together, and our interest is what is in the best interest of the people of South Sudan. Why did you follow a man who has been accused of orchestrating bloodshed in the backyard? of your father's birthplace, especially in Bor in 1991? Well, uh, by the time my father died, uh, a reconciliation process had already happened within the SPLM. So Dr. Riek Machar did not, did not join the SPLM in 2005. He, joined, he, he, he came back to the movement in 2002, and, and a thorough reconciliation had been done, so that by the time my father had passed away, he, uh, they had already been reconciled, and he was, he was within the ranks of the movement. So why, why, why should I not continue the reconciliation that was started by my father with Dr. Riek Machar? So this, 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 these are words, of, these are words of, our, of, of, of my detractors. They are not really words of people who want peace in South Sudan. Because if you want peace in South Sudan, why would you open up old wounds? Wouldn't, 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 it, wouldn't you be more interested in, in, in promoting peace? And I don't know if those people also informed you that uh, Dr. Riek Machar had come and in, to a, there was an event that was being done and he apologized. And uh, you know in Africa for a man to apologize is a very difficult thing. He apologized and shed tears. And, but anyway, that's not, that, is not, that is besides the point. The point is that we want peace in South Sudan. You don't want if we want peace, up, if we want want peace in South Sudan, wounds, do we open up busy. old wounds? You're you not know? want to open up old wounds, mm -hmm. but maybe or you're busy cutting fresh ones. Well... Th that's, that is the nature of war. War, war has happened. Um, I have not heard you asking about why has the, what, what, what were the circumstances that led to the, to the conflict. Uh, you have just jumped in immediately into, into, into what my detractors say. You know? so, but you have not given a chance for, for an explanation of, this is it, of what actually happened. This is it, Mabior. Mm. What is it? Like you asked before about... Um, about the power hungry man and i told you that no it's it's not it's not illegal to dream anybody can dream to want to be president i don't know if we have the time but i'll try to 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 squeeze it into into a into a very short uh, explanation in may of last year that the, the 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 terms like the of our of our chairman to be the chair of the party expired Mm -hmm. Because we were supposed to hold a, na a national convention. So Chairman Salfa is not at the legitimate chair of the SPLM because his, his term expired in May. And so there are people who 
had an amb ambitions to to contest for the for the for the primaries which we call the national convention the national convention is equivalent to the primaries for us so several people made their uh, intentions known that they want to contest. Dr. Riek Machar is one of them. He's never made it a secret. He's always said, I want to contest for the chair. Uh, the, the Secretary General, Comrade Pagana Mum, also wanted to contest for the chair. Mama Rebecca wanted to contest for the chair as well. And Comrade Salfa was going to contest for the chair. So this, the, the winner of this, in a, in a civilized society, would have shaken the hand of the winner. The losers would have shaken the hands of the winner and joined them and go to the general elections. The argument is said that why didn't Riek Machar wait until 2015? How does he wait until 2015 when he's within the same party as, as Comrade Salfa? So he will compete with Comrade Salfa within the SPLM, and then whoever wins goes to, to the primaries. Uh, in, in 2011, the leadership commissioned uh, a, a study for, for the leaders to go to the different areas. Dr. Riek Machar was told to go to Rumbek. Other leaders were told to go to, to other states, uh, not Rumbek, Lakes State, and other states and to compile a report about what is, what, what is the general opinion about, of the people and feeling of the people towards the SPLM. And the report came back unanimous that the SPLM had lost direction and lost vision. You know? So you can see that the popularity of, 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 of our chairman, uh, Comrade Salfa, at the time, our chairman at the time, had, been, had waned, his, his popularity had waned, while Dr. Riek Machar's popularity had grown. And then with, through him uh, being seen to work together with uh, Mama Rebecca, work together with uh, Comrade Pagan, it gave him also more, it gave them more power. So Self Comrade Salfa was feeling threatened that if he was, if he's to hold the national convention, he would lose the chair, you know. And so he did several things which everybody followed in the media. The first one was to cut the powers of the vice president, followed in July by, by, by sacking of his running mate and sacking of the entire cabinet, followed in November by dissol illegal dissolution of the SPLM structures. So all these things were being done in order to, in order to try and arouse tribalism in, the, in, in sen tribal sentiments in the people, uh, bringing back the 91 issue so that, so that you arouse tribalism in the people and, and, and clash them. The, the, the idea of, of, of sacking your running mate was, 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 was bad politics, you know, so that if, if, if a clash happens, and the world expected this war, which is happening now, to happen in July. But under the able leadership of Dr. Riek Machar, he calmed the people down and said, no, Dr. Re uh, Comrade Salfa has the, co he, the he, it's within his rights in the Constitution to sack me. So don't do anything, no, please calm down. Because he knew that he could defeat him through the democratic process. He had him cornered politically, and he was going to defeat him in the National Convention. So it would not be in his interest to do anything that will bring violence to jeopardize the process by which he was going to defeat him. Could the people of South Sudan and your leaders, couldn't you have gone to court? If I can finish, mm -hmm. yeah, because, so the group, uh, the SPLM political uh, leaders, uh, the, the political bureau members, then decided to counter uh, cutting the, the, the vice president's um, powers, sacking the, the, his running mate and, and the entire dissolving the cabinet. All these things were happening. So. This, 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 these uh, leaders then decided to counter uh, this move that was being made. So the SPLM political leaders went to Dr. Riek Machar and convinced him and said, uh, Comrade Riek Machar, you are our deputy chairman in the party. Even though we have been sacked from government and you're no longer the vice president and we are no longer in, in ministerial positions, we, are, we still have power within the party. And Comrade Salfa cannot dismiss us from the party. It's only the national convention, which is the highest decision-making body for the party that can dismiss us. So let us use your position as the deputy chair. Let us use that position to put pressure on the chairman to call us for dialogue, you know? Because the group of, what we now call the group of 11, uh, Mama Rebecca mm -hmm. and Dr. Riek Machar, were all one group trying, fighting for reforms within the SPLM, you know? So they, they, they decided to use the, the, the office of the deputy chairman. So this is how they called for a press conference on the 6th of December. The press conference that they called for on the 6th of December is available uh, online. It's on YouTube and, and in, in the social media. So at this press conference, they, they now disclosed to the people because there had been a leadership crisis for a while. It had been going on for almost one year. And the people, our, our constituents were confused about what is happening because none of the leaders was coming out to explain to the people what was happening. So they explained this 
during the 6th of December press conference. And they, 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 they gave the president an ultimatum, the chairman, they gave him an ultimatum and said, by, we are, if you don't call us for dialogue between now and the 15th of December, we are going to go for a rally where we are going to even explain further to the people what is the reason for the, for the, for the, de for the, for the leadership crisis in the movement. So the chairman then called a meeting on the, on the same 15th when they had scheduled for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the rally. He called a meeting, a meeting which the, the, the secretary general had been for one whole year sent about over five letters to the chairman call, telling him to convene this meeting. He didn't want to convene it for a year. So now when he felt threatened by the press conference and, and then the rally was coming, he then decided to call for the press conference. So when he called for the press, uh, when, 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 the, when the group called for the, for the, for the rally, for the rally, yeah, for, the, for the meeting at the rally, the president scheduled the meeting at the same time on the 15th. So the, the meetings had been going on, then the, 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 the SPLM political leaders decided to boycott the, 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 the meeting because there was, it, it deteriorated into name calling. So they decided they're not going back for the evening session. That same night, there was a shootout among the presidential guards. They divided themselves. The president then went on TV uh, on a, in a press conference. This press conference is also available online where he put on the military uniforms and went on national TV and declared that he had foiled a coup. With no evidence, he went on national TV, de declared he had foiled a coup, and declared a curfew from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. and that then the leaders of this coup would, be, would soon be arrested. Um, as we all know now, the, the political leaders were tried in the, in the South Sudanese courts and they were found that there was no coup. The curfew that he declared, when you declare a curfew in the name of keeping law and order, it means that you want people to remain in their homes. Well, what ended up happening was that soldiers wearing the same uniform that he was wearing, you know, and these soldiers were trained for a period of about eight months. They were being trained. They were, they were, the, the National Army leadership, the Chief of Staff, the Minister of Defense, was not aware of the training of these soldiers. They were trained under the presidency. They were financed by the presidency. This same force went and conducted a door-to-door -door search and killed people door-to-door -door in South Sudan after a curfew had been declared. And they, so one can, so, one can so conclude that he wanted people to remain in their homes so that they are in one place and so that they are killed. And the people who did the killing were wearing the same military uniforms that he was wearing in the press conference. You know? I'll, I'll, I'll let you say all that because uh, I don't want to be accused of the, uh, have a, a, a story, a single side story. Because, uh, so that you can tell the world your point of view. We have hardly had somebody from the React Machar team to be on this table to speak. Now, your country seems to be so much wounded. There's a view that there are hardly any moderates within the two camps of Salva Kiir and Machar. Rather, the group of the 11, including Dr. Majoka Gott, Deng Deng, General Jera Wong, Pagana Mum, are the moderate voices, I'm told. Have you tried to reach out to this group? Yeah, definitely. We de I mean, we were one. We, we, we've always been one. We share the same political views. When the process started, they are the ones who encouraged Dr. Riek Machar you know, so they, they were one group until they were arrested. And when they were arrested, um, some of us fled. Dr. Riek Machar fled Juba with other people. So when we finally met, you know, after the, after the signing of the uh, agreement on the detainees, the cessation of hostilities, eventually they, they were all released. And so when they came out, they, they, they decided to form a third block and not join us in the in in the in in, in the SPLM. Hold on to your SPLA. point. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll discuss the issue of ethnicity in South Sudan. We'll be right back.